Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education work session. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for the county citizens to review on QACTV7, a local cable station. At this time, we'll have a moment of silence for the victims from Florida's massacre. Thank you. The agenda is available on the form. On, oh, during this work session, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and or pagers and hold personal conversations and comments outside of the meeting room. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by our President Jennifer Jordan. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Um, at this time, I need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. As permitted by the Section 3-305B of the General Provision Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, I move that we go into closed session to discuss collective bargaining Two items for personal, uh, two personal items for SES principal, director of human resources position, and one administrative function item. Um, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to go into closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Welcome back to the open session, Queen Anne's County. Board of Education work session. Um, at this time, I need a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Motion. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to accept the agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Um, the first item in open session will be the presentations and it will be the budget for fiscal year 2017. Okay. Well, when we left the last meeting, I think we had um, looked at a couple of scenarios for budget, um, hoping that we would somehow find the dollars that we do not have um, to, to accommodate our budget with just the 937000 that we got from county government. So you had sent us back to look at athletic fees and also to check on um, a particular problem that I think one of you, Mrs. Harper, maybe had noticed in the newspaper where Sudlersville, um, the town of Sudlersville had increased its cost for water and sewer. Um, given that, Robin did call and find out that that had been increased. So. In terms of that and in terms of going back to look at if there was anything else we could reduce from our budget, um, we, we revised our three, or we revised the two scenarios we gave you plus added a third one. And if you, don't, if you would just allow me to show the three, um, then I'll be open for any questions and hopefully they'll be clear. I think they will be. So the first one's going to be the scenario where we talked about the fact that we had $937,000 from the, from the um, county and we had our state funding and that that was going to be able to accommodate the pension and then retiree health care and then we showed you, we just sort of backed dollars out, we showed you the money that we had for uh, $57,000 worth of cost of doing business which had to do with several increases in fees we had. To that you'll notice in bold that we have added um, sewer fees as 5A town of Sudlersville and that's increased our cost by another $20,000 so essentially we have $77,000 in cost of doing business that we're going to have to accommodate. And then we had on this particular scenario that we would reduce class size in two, um, or we needed to have two classes. This is the one that we put in the budget for just two positions which you had asked for. One was to reduce Sudlersville's fifth grade class size and the other was to be able to get the physics seat teacher for science at Queen Anne's County High School. And then you had also asked for the athletic trainers um, contracts be put in there. 
and you had technology staff. Well, in the course of looking at this particular scenario, um, since that time, Mr. Paluski, who was reorganizing some of the staff up in his division, was able to reduce by one sec administrative assistant, and he can put aside the dollars for that technology staff person. So we took that off of here. So it's just showing you what's left that we have as a cost. And we had said, we recommended um, $610,000 and that would be a percent across the board for all staff. And you had said you didn't know if you really liked that option and for us to look at something that would really look at more compensation for staff. So is that, remember that particular one? All right, so that was scenario one. We just revised it to show the technology piece out of it and to show the sewer fees on it. So then the second um, proposal we made to you or scenario we gave you was to show you the f state and county funding again but then to show you all of those costs out of there but then we went back to our budget and we took most things back down to the level that they had been in the budget without the increases and in addition to that we had taken money off of materials of instruction for staff and we continued to reduce costs in our budget so that we thought we had gotten closer to the point you wanted for our st staffing. But you'll see from that, at the bottom line, we still had a shortfall of $350,000. That's where we ended our conversation last time. And said to you, the only way to take care of that was to really look at cutting four positions from the elementary classrooms. And I told you how that would look. And I was mentioning to you that, for instance, at Kent Island Elementary, second grade would go from 20 to 24 students. Or Centerville Elementary from second, uh, second grade would go from 19 to 22. Or that there were a couple of classes at Mattapique that we could look at that were in third and fourth grades that would go from 18 up to 24 and 25 students. So there are different places we could reduce, but it was always taking it above the level that they had been in the past number of years where we had worked so hard to get them. And then we also had said to you, if you didn't want to do the elementary positions, we could consider the world language program at the middle school. And you all had said you really didn't like that. So I've just taken that off. This is my revised second scenario. So out of this, it shows that we've added to it the sewer fees but we've also reduced the um, positions at the middle school from that and we still have this shortfall that we have to make up which the only alternative there is reducing by four elementary classroom teachers. Are you counting in that the um, the fifth grade teacher at SMS that you have over on scenario one and am I, Robin? Because I don't see that on here, so I'm going to assume because it's not. If I'm correct, I said that if that was only going to be one year that I felt that we did not have to hire another teacher for that because it will only be one year that that influx is in there. The only um, concern I have is that that bubble of kids is going to go through. I don't know what it's going to mean in terms of middle school when they get there, but I don't know. I mean, maybe middle school yeah, classes I'm, can... Okay, because I, I, I wasn't okay with that because I just felt that because next year's class is like only two-thirds of what is going there this year, is, so that's... Correct. Um, well, if that's we, a lot of money right there. If we think you can tolerate 30 students in I a thought class. That, I thought that we said, though, that it would be 20 24 or, 30. or no, 25 kids. Not at Sudlersville. Sudlersville's fifth grade, um, unless we are able to put another teacher there, will be in the upper 20s, if not 30. The other thing is, she can, and that she can re, as I understand, you can reevaluate sure, next, year, next year. And if that right. bubble moves up, then you move up. You know, could move grade. the person up, or we could yeah. maybe not, maybe we'd be able to absorb it and not need it. Right. You're absolutely correct that in the upcoming um, elementary yeah. portion, right. they will not use it. Right. But for that one, they do need it. But Robin, are those two positions in there? Or are they not? I forget. They are not. Um, so we'd still have to take six. Right. 
those two those plus two these four. Plus the four. So this scenario is really showing the reduction of six because we didn't show the other two teachers. So it's still doing what we had suggested, which was taking two of these positions that I just read to you. Which you know, um, and you know, and you know, I'm big on class size. I think I think that we could go in Centerville Elementary School from second grade. They could go from 19 to 22 this year. It, it wouldn't be, it would not be the best thing, but it wouldn't be horrible. I, I don't like a fifth grade having 30 kids. I don't day. either. That's why I would say I'd That's rather do position. that if we're going to be reducing staff. Now, the one thing I would like to make clear is um, as soon as I knew we might have to reduce staff, we put a hold on any elementary positions that were open so that we have enough open positions that if we reduce staff, nobody loses their job. So these five people will, will go into other elementary positions and they may not love where they have to go. And it'll be based on probably the last and the first, you know, whoever is youngest in years on staff. Usually you the usually you ask for volunteers first because if somebody lives in the area and would, would not mind moving to a different school and you know which school it is, which we would know, then um, we ask that. But if there's not, then we often go back to seniority. Could you get a number for me for how many kids? I had a number before. And there's no decrease grade, in but pay I'll get you either. Right. Excuse me? There's no decrease in pay, if, say, if somebody's going from Ken Island to Southersville or Shirt Hill. There's no decrease. Okay, I'm just... Yeah. Um, just make sure. Just Teachers, asking. it's based on their okay, good. years of experience. Yeah, I'm just curious as to how many kids will be, would be there. Um, I'm just about 99% sure it was close to 30, but I don't, I don't think I brought that paper with me from um, Sudlersville. All right. That's so, fine. So if I could just tell you the third scenario, so you just have it to think about. Because right now you have a scenario of, of, of offering just a COLA because you can't afford to offer any more. Or you have reduced staff so that you can compensate because you said your two priorities were keeping class sizes at a relatively low level and also compensating staff. And, and you know, I remind you, we are behind a step still, although there are other systems that are behind a step as well, but we are still behind a step. We've been trying to make them up. We've made them all up but one. But if we don't, if we aren't able to give teachers a step this year, then we'll be behind two. So, you know, right away you're starting to reverse the process we had. But if we look at number three, I had a conversation, um, and you'll notice at the very top of this chart that it says there's an additional revenue of $400,000. You directed me at the end of the last meeting to go back and talk to our county government and explain the situation and how dire a situation this was that we would be having to reduce staff and would it be possible for us to um, have the additional dollars put in our budget this year because we were pretty confident that they had not actually finalized their budget. So I have been contacting them one by one and I have had tentative, and I can only say tentative because until you're there and you see a vote, it's only tentative, but I've had agreement from three of the um, commissioners that they would vote for an increase for our um, <coughs> for our county funding and put that $400,000 there. They said they had not finalized their budget at this point and that they're, um, they would hopefully be able to let me know something tomorrow. So I have a different kind of meeting with them tomorrow, but I'm going to ask this question as a part of that meeting. And if they did say yes, then that would mean that we would be able to fund each of the positions that we had in the budget, the two that we need, plus the um, contractual positions we had in there for the athletic trainers. Not the technology person, right Robin? Because the technology is still a piece of what Mr. Poluski gave back. So we'd be able to cover everything by doing that, which to me is the best of both worlds. It's still making the cut 10% um, to materials of instruction and all of the other areas. We had non-public placements we had reduced and we had also cut um, course reimbursement. We had cut some of our professional development monies. We'd cut anywhere we thought we could make it work for us. 
but we still were short dollars. So this way, that 400000 would really give us some opportunities to accomplish, at least at a minimal level, what you had asked. So those are our three scenarios. And this takes away two elementary students? This does not take away anyone. No, pe no people at all? No. Okay. All right. I misunderstood that. Correct, Robin? It would still collapse the one at the high school. It would still collapse the one at the high school. Right. We would need really more than 400000 to make the one at the high school not have to be collapsed. Now, from my perspective, um, they haven't offered computer science yet, but it's one of the pathways we said we wanted to start. So it delays us starting computer science at Queen Anne's County High School, which we do have started at Ken Island High School. So then we're going to be back to a, you know trying to have equity among our schools. But in the course of everything, um, it saves a number of positions that we thought we were going to have to reduce. Provided the that they all agree. Provided that we get the 400,000. If we don't get it, we are at one of the other two scenarios or something else that you may want us to look at. Now the final thing I asked Robin to bring was the piece you asked about for athletic um, pay, to play. pay to play. Thank you. The pay to play. So she can show you what you would gain in terms of that. And then I, I didn't ask Sid to be prepared to do this, but I know that if he could just um, share briefly some of the concerns with the pay to play and what we would have to make sure we were trying to accommodate. I'm just thinking about making sure we had some some people stepping up to help us with students that didn't have the costs for the trees and all that, but you, you remember enough of what it was. Continuity and all that. All right. Um, so basically what I have here, and I can't get it all on the screen, but we have seven years worth of actual revenues and expenditures for the athletic budget. Um, and if we go over here on this side, you can see the top line is the gate receipts. The second line are the student activity fees, which are the fees that we charge the students to pay to participate. Um, Plus fees to get into the games. Yes. Yes? That was part of the gate receipts. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's gate part receipts. of the gate. Okay. That's part of the gate. <clears throat> and then we had the other last two are donations. Um, we The first couple years that we did the pay to participate, we did have some people who stepped up in the community and made donations um, to cover some of the costs for students mm -hmm. that were unable to pay. Um, and that's the last two. So is that the boosters? That, that was the Sometimes boosters. the boosters Sometimes. did, but we had some, uh, we had sent out letters to a lot of different organizations right. and they submitted some right. donations to us. These are mostly businesses in the community. Okay. And so if you look at um, what the expenditure or what the revenues were, gay receipts, you can see we started out in 2008 and 9, we were around 72. We peaked in 2011 12, which was the year that we were charging $2 per student to get into a game, and we were charging parents $7 to get into a game. Um, and I think we did that for two years. And you can see in the second year that we were charging the seven dollars, the kind of right. the revenues kind of dropped off a little bit. And in 13, 14, I believe we had a couple of um, teams that were on their way to state, so our gate receipts <coughs> increased that year. And gate receipts each year vary depending on what you have. If you have a really good team, if you have a team that's you know really doing very well, then they'll draw a lot more crowd. Right. So gate receipts, the other part with gate receipts is they go directly back into the athletic budget to pay for umpires, referees, uniforms, um, supplies for the, for the games and those types of things. Um, but you can see on 2011-12, and 13-14, all three of those years we collected activity fees or play to pay fees. The first year we collected 143 and then it dropped off to 133 and that's what we collected for the next two years. So if you were to reinstitute that, I think that would be the number that you would be looking at um, possibly collecting is around 130. Okay. So that would cover the cost of a teacher plus maybe your, um, but does it have to go back into athletics? No. No. Okay. No, so it would cover the cost of a teacher plus maybe 
contractual employee. But Sid, so what were the issues that we had with it? Well, we, <coughs> what we'd have to think about is obviously the farm students would be exempt. Um, the other part, we had a strong uh, donation system back then that was you know, helping families out that were also struggling but didn't meet that farm's threshold. Um, after that, we did have in place, um, if you had multiple siblings and a family, and then also if you performed multiple sports throughout that year. I can't think of the exact and what we reduced figures, the but they were reduced right. on that. So those are the couple items that we'd have to figure out right. how we would want to before we rolled it out. And getting the information out early. So it would be a decision we'd want to make as soon as possible to get out to families. So that it would August 10th is the right. first day for right. fall sports. Right. So those are the options that you have to discuss. August 10th. We won't know how I feel about that one. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I am not for pay to play. Now I am for, did you not say that the students are not paying to go into right. games? No, I no. am for students having to pay to go into games. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. So that's part of the gate fees. <coughs> right. So yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think that they should start paying again. I don't have a problem with that, but. The teachers are still free though. Mm -hmm. yeah, teachers, if, if yeah. they have a badge, generally they okay. can be free. Well, the idea was to try and get more of our staff there to help monitor. You know, if you have a staff person there, you feel right. like you've got somebody that knows the students. Right. You were paying two dollars to students to get in. They used to. I think it was two dollars. Yeah, they used to. And what? Yeah, then we would charge more for the parents. Is that what you're well, parents, when it got to be seven dollars, and I stood in those lines. People could never understand why we were seven dollars when everybody else in the state seemed to be five. They but they stood because they liked their games. They also had Ken Island had a fifty yeah. dollar family fee. Yes, they did. They went to the family piece. Yeah, which I think both yeah. high schools, both high schools too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how? What would you? How would you like to approach what we have? Because you you really do have to. Um, we can't assume we're going to get four hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. I would like to assume that, and it would make life very easy. But if we do, that would be one. If that, yes, everything's great. But if not, what? Well, I'm not for a fifth grade teacher at Sellersville Middle School. Okay, so you'd like now, I want to see. I want to see how many kids would be per classroom. Okay. But I'm not for doing that. Not when it's going to go back down the following year. All right. So, well, I am be, because I don't want it. I don't want upper 20s for fifth grade. I don't want it. I mean, you may not know the exact thing, but he said it's at least in the upper 20s. I think mm -hmm. our priority, my priority is besides a class. Position you can slide for the next year. I mean, you're going to have a problem in sixth grade. So, well, this essentially, bubble goes yeah. through. And I slid had to do one that position. In the past. So the science physics teacher position essentially we've wiped out because Mrs. Wilhelm is going to find that position. So we are now looking for one position, <coughs> and Annette's saying that maybe not to look for that. Um, but the only the only caution is that is one of our most needy schools. So, you know, we want to make sure we well, continue to keep class sizes small there. Well, if we can. And I agree with that. But um, what about the, the school goes 2016 17 goes Title I, totally Title I? Um, I mean, is there not money in that budget to find that that well, one year teacher or? it's we, We've done once before a long time ago. Um, we did something with a class size position, but I don't know if that's a legitimate piece out of Title I anymore or not. I'd have to go check. I think that that should yeah. be something yeah. we j should check into. But we can, we can check into that. Yeah. I, th I think where we would run into our problem, if we provide teachers at all of our other fifth grade classrooms to have 20 or 24, 24 yep. students in the classroom and we are taking funds out of our Title I grant in order to maintain that same um, ratio at that school, I'm fearful that we would be considered no, supplanting. Right. And what I forgot was there's a thing called a comparability report and we have to show class size at every school and then number of teachers, the kinds of teachers. If the Title I schools 
have fewer teachers or more kids per class, we have to resolve that. That is that is part of that comparability report, which I did forget about. So, but if that is that if is that only for uh, I mean, if it were um, a teacher for only one year, does that? I think there's other ways to look at um, supports for that school, so they might be able to look at a kind of teacher that nobody else has, like um, an additional reading teacher that would work with that grade level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They could look at something like that that would maybe pull students out, and I don't know if that's the best model, but I'm just saying, or an intervention teacher, although we have intervention teachers, mm -hmm. but an additional person. I just think it's something that we should probably look at. I mean, yeah. let's, I've got it. I've I don't heard, want to do anything illegal, but, you it, know. It I've, would definitely have to be a different type of teacher than just right. a regular classroom right. teacher. Right, Because right. we supply that at. The well, room. because my question also there is, schools. is where are we going to put that teacher? Well, that we've worked out because they're taking one of their built labs, which mm -hmm. they no longer need because now they have right. the Chromebooks, right. and they're dismantling it, I believe. Three of them. <coughs> three, three of them. them. So he's going to have three additional classrooms. Okay. So, I ask a question about Title I. As you were indicating that if that school goes totally Title it is I, going. It, is. it is going. Mm -hmm. So isn't there just an X amount of dollars that's given to our county regardless, and then it gets divvied up among the Title I schools? It's not like we get more money because it's a... No. Um, well, we're you know, getting more Title I money, but I don't think we're getting that much more of it because they're all Title I. But for instance, Graysonville is now going to be school-wide. They got a supplemental kind of grant because of special because of their scores on special ed for Park. So now they get to be school-wide Title I, and they get additional dollars in this extra grant that she's now written. And when did that happen? Way. I mean, when it just happened. Uh, it just did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we haven't even seen the park numbers, so. Well, that's what you'll see here, but okay. but the state has the park numbers and identifies so schools that it. are called. Okay. And then what about, the what about Church Hill? It's just a Church half? Church Hill is still um, partial. Targeted. But it's not called targeted, thank you. Targeted. That's the buzzword, targeted. Yeah. Okay. I'm just asking because I remember you saying before we only right. got X amount of dollars and we, we had to spread them. We have dropped schools before, but right now, um, as they've looked at the dollars, they don't really feel they need to drop. They feel they have adequate dollars. And what they also do is look at the most number of students. So our two Sutlersville schools would have to have many more dollars than Churchill, right. especially, but even more than Graysonville, because Graysonville doesn't have the same level of poverty that Sutlersville does elementary or middle. Middle school, even though it's not as high as elementary, what gets turned in as, as um, poverty is still higher than the other schools. Thank you. If, if, this, if the class, let me just make it clear, if the class size ne the next year went down, so I mean, I mean, if we didn't have a need for that extra position, then you could use that, that at the middle right. school for the computer position. There was a lot. Well, it would depend. Uh -huh. Title One's very. It wouldn't be a Title One. I'm oh. talking about us trying to budget for oh. a. Just a position. We're looking at to get that position to keep that class size down from 2,800 kids. Well, usually somewhere in the county, somebody's leaving, and we need to absorb a position. So, I'll just use Ken Island Elementary as an example. We have sometimes had eight kindergarten teachers there and then the next year we don't have enough kindergarten students to really warrant small classes and I'll say okay well I noticed that this school has more kids coming this year we're going to take one of Ken Island's teachers right. and move them right. so that's the same kind of thing that could happen with um, the Sutlersville position you just, have, you just have to always be watching what's happening across the county being at Sutlersville is also you know, they have spe you know, special issues right. in that school. I really can't see Lauren making that 28 kids. I'm, it would be so well, hard I, for a teacher. I, I do have to tell you that, um, let me see, Graysonville will tell you the same thing because they have, you know, they have um, the top of the kids and they have the, the most poverty. So they have two extreme areas. It's very diverse. And then um, I just had an email from Centerville Elementary that said, oh, I can't believe you would talk about taking a second grade position. Do you realize the kinds of students that are in the class? We have some really needy students that have additional supports. And if you put any more students in those classrooms to make them all 22, there isn't going to be an opportunity to give the kind of support we need to the students that have specific needs. I mean, everybody, 
I understand all that, and, I'm, and I know you all do too. We, we've finally gotten class sizes where we like them. And to not be able to keep them there is really a problem. So we're betting on, hopefully, that the commissioners will... We're hoping that they really mean the three that said they would vote for us, that they really will vote for us to have the additional dollars for the very purpose we just talked about, to keep us from having to ex expand our class sizes. But, but you all have to really talk about, if they don't, <coughs> what, what would you like us to do? Or do you want to come <coughs> back again? So we're comfortable with that scenario of, oh. of getting the 400. Yeah, I think we're all and comfortable we're, with that. That would be great I mean, if we do. Okay, so we're done with that one. Now we have to say, what if we don't? What if you don't? Okay. Well, if we, if we do get the 400, you've said clearly what you want in your budget. Right. So that's what we've accommodated. Right. So that, that's answered. <clears throat> it's, if we don't, how do you want us to accommodate that you want this? How are we going to make that happen? And that, all we have left, you've heard me say a hundred million times, 86% of your budget is people. And there is nowhere else to take it. 90% salaries and benefits, I think. I mean, you just, just nowhere else to take even, it. It's what it is. And that's even without doing the collective bargaining piece. Correct. <coughs> I guess I would be more in favor of this scenario too, um, and that's the taking the ten percent off of materials and instruction and that whole scenario. Okay, which one is that one, dear? Well, that's scenario, scenario two. Well, what we would still have to lose, we'd have still to reduce or six class five classroom positions. Well, actually not. If we're not going to do Sudlersville, well, you don't, you haven't really agreed on that. If Which one loses the least amount of positions? Number one. Number one loses the least number of positions. That's with or the 400 thing. Or figure a no, way. Three is with the 400. Okay. Yeah. Or we can't fully implement. Scenario number one. Scenario number one just has a cost of living across the board. And, and that doesn't lose any staff. No, it doesn't lose any staff. Scenario two, you could just talk about having um, our negotiator go back and talk about <coughs> how they could use the number of dollars that are available to try to accommodate what you're asking. So can I ask Without okay. asking it. Uh, under, under number two, you have all these reductions. Those have to come out. They have to come out regardless. Right. Okay, so you're just showing us where you're reducing the dollars. We have gotten regardless. you down to 300, and we're down to a shortfall of $351. 51,000. 51, yes, 351,000. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I wish it were only 350. Yeah. <laughs> We'd make that yeah. work. We'd make yeah. that work. So we're talking I, and about Robin would have rounded three, up 352. Now we're trying to talk about how to come up with 351. Correct. How do we do Come up with it or say we don't have it? Oh, <clears throat> I am. Um, which, which we don't. I'm all for the athletic trainers, but if we don't have the money to do. The negotiations, and I'm for taking them out. All right. Well, I mean, sixty thousand. Well, and you also said, uh, um, Mrs. DiMaggio, to reduce the Sudlersville position. Yes. And I told you that, um, even though it's not here, that Mrs. Wilhelm called me this week and said she could reduce the piece for computer science. Right. So that's. Now we're down to only having to lose four positions, not six. Plus, we could take one of those off, maybe a little bit, <laughs> if we took the 60,000 out. Right. Just trying to, s the least number of classroom positions you'd have to reduce. Um, I'm not happy with taking any of them out, but. You know, in, in the future, I think we need to start looking at, though, if, especially with like some of the AP courses, because I know they have like the least yeah. amount of kids in them. They do. Maybe having right. some online AP courses. We can do that. Um, the only thing is you still have to have somebody, if you're doing AP online, well, I'd have to look at how it's done. Mr. Pulisky will, because there are um, some stipulations about how that counts as a credit. It has to be 80 percent, and you teach part of it, which means you have to have a teacher. It could be between the schools. That's what I'm saying, yeah. like a yeah. satellite. Yeah, so I might be able to do that kind of yeah. thing. 
So you've been talking about that already. How many, how many kids are in the AP classes? Well, it depends on some of the, um, like English might right. have many more than some of the um, upper level, I'll say an upper level math, which is probably not true, might have 10 or 12. Calculus A, B, and A, yeah, a might have A, B, and 10, A, C, you know, they don't, 12. B, C, they don't have so we, we have said the limit's going to be 15, and we try to hold to that, but by the time we get the schedule and they're trying to make that schedule work, um, and they're only going to lose a period, then they go ahead and spread it out because they don't want to lose, they, they don't have enough to lose a teacher, and they need the teacher to be teaching each period, so then it's back to, well, we'll just spread this out and make two classes, and then they become smaller. But there are art ones, there are a number of them that um, are smaller. They're How many kids small. do we have taking AP classes uh, this I, year? I, I can't. I'm, no. I, I was going to say it's a couple hundred, but well, I don't I just know, know that, like, sometimes at, the, I like, at those I schools or just one? I think at Kent Island. Do you know, Dave? I'm going to say it's more than 150 kids, probably a couple hundred kids at Kent Island, at least that many at Queen Anne's. I'd say that many at each. It would be nice to have Christine Schindler look at it through the digital wave to see if we could do, you know, one teacher at one of the two schools well, we and have them. We know we can do that. Doing in, going in through we could actually do it our counties broadcast, doing that. which yeah. is one way to do it, where you could actually be at Kent Island and the student is at at, at Queen mm -hmm. Anne's in a classroom, being able to, you know, interact with the teacher. There's a lot of different ways in which that can be. That'd be delivered. interesting to see. Well, and Baltimore County, I think, has been doing it for many, many years. But the, here was the downfall. We tried it once, and the downfall was the group that has the assistant and the camera wasn't as engaged as the group that had the teacher. Right. Then we started having the teacher spend X number of days at each school so that they could identify with right. the teacher. I'm so sorry I brought it up because we're getting out, okay. of, out of... But it really is a very important piece because there yeah, are well ways to is. work it out. Yeah, it is because, I mean, not to say that um, I, I, the AP classes are very important, but if you only have 300 kids out of 2,400, 2,500 kids taking AP classes, I mean, there's so we got to think of another way to do it. But that's only out of the juniors and seniors, and maybe an occasional sophomore. We mm -hmm. have mostly just our juniors and seniors taking mm -hmm. them. So I'll get you actual numbers. Yeah, that, that'd be I'd be interested in knowing that. Okay. All right, but back to what are we cutting? So we're, I'm gonna. What I'm thinking I'm hearing you say, hear you saying is, scenario two. Um, get it down to as few positions as possible to have to move. They're going to be elementary if we have to move them, and I'll look at where it has the least impact on a class size, which is only estimated at this point because um, right. until kids register and I see what actually shows up. But we have a couple that'll only go to. 22 and 21, so one, they're both at Centerville Elementary, unfortunately. But we also could look at uh, Mattapique, which 24 and 25 in a fourth and in a third and fourth grade isn't unheard of because Kennard has that now. Yeah, my daughter so, had it, right. son, it's the whole right. way through. Right. So, oh, I mean, cool I'll look at the ones where it's kids more equitable place. if we have to do them. Okay. Fine with that. Well, I'd also be up for maybe modifying, as we discussed, uh, part of the um, compensation. Okay. Not omitting it, but modifying it. Okay. What, through collective bargaining? Delays, yeah, delays and stuff. Yeah, All right. That piece. <coughs> so are we voting on something now? I mean, can we? Well, we can make a motion to accept one scenario, and then if it does not happen, we could say that we, then our, we would have a fallback okay. scenario. Right, A and B. I got it. Or a comeback scenario. If you if it if, if you it doesn't feel happen, that there's too come much back to there's too much in play. Yeah. If oh. you feel that we don't really have a good enough handle on what we'd have to cut at this point. But we have 17 days to make that. Correct. You'd have to be before July. We have to have a budget, June 30th. Robin has to have a budget. What do your schedules look like the week of the 27th through the 30th? And it could be just for an hour, not even that. Right. We don't need it. I will not be in town the 27th. So. 
the week prior to that I'm good but the week Robin's out I think okay. is that the week you're out the 20th through the 24th or whatever that's you're out okay so we're looking at 28 29 or 30 like and the 28th you need to is better so can you, anybody do the 28th I can do the 28th it can be whatever hour you want we'll just make it work you don't have to you don't have to worry about the kids because right no I'm good um I'm okay First thing, I'm okay, 28. Okay, but so what would you like? What would you like that to be? As early what time as you can. Um, 9 a.m. 9, 9 o'clock. Okay. Right. If we need it. Right. If, if tomorrow we need they approve the 400,000, then you're going that. to accept scenario three. Yes. That we gave you. Yes. Which so has all those cuts in the budget itself. But no positions are cut, right? Except the collapse, Except of, the the one collapse of the one at the high school. the one at the high school. Okay. So, I need a motion to accept scenario three, which is the county funding additional funds um, to support our budget. If the county commissioners do not fund our request, then we need to reconvene on June. 28th at 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to accept scenario three for the proposed budget. Um, the county funding additional funds. If the county commissioners do not fund the request, we reconvene on June 28th at 9 a.m. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Okay, next on the agenda is the textbook series, English Language Arts. We ask uh, Mrs. Vedens to come, be, and the only reason we're doing this at a work session is we have to get things out on display. So um, she would never be able to get them ordered before they need them. Hence the discussion, Mrs. Vedens. Hi, thank okay. you for having me. Um, I sent you a PowerPoint about our process, just to give you some background, but much like when I was here last June and we worked through our middle school textbook adoption, um, our high school textbooks, we knew last year really needed to be replaced badly. So we started the process early in the fall. Um, thank you. And uh, invitation went out to about 22 teachers and administrators. And we began looking. We had presentations from several textbook companies. And not surprisingly, our high school teachers honed in on the same two series that our middle school teachers um, had chosen. And like the middle school, piloted both. Because we really wanted to get their feedback from using the textbooks, not just looking through them and looking at the table of contents, but using them with children. And so we went through a brief pilot with the Pearson, a pilot with the Houghton Mifflin, and then teachers evaluated, and I put results of the evaluation with all their comments in that PowerPoint, but they overwhelmingly chose Pearson. So I'm here tonight to ask that we um, adopt the Pearson textbook for the 2016-17 um, school year. In the quote that I have, or the um, given Mrs. Vassell and in the money listed there on the evaluation form, that includes, as I've again outlined in the in the presentation, that includes a three-year um, student consumable so that would be three years of students at all grade levels 9 through 12 the teacher resources obviously and then the digital comp component which is a pretty um, large well thought out digital component so as I said teachers were very happy each selection in this series begins with a really super engaging video 
for students. So they're drawn into an essential idea or question through video. They have a very nice kind of round table discussion about the video and the essential points in the literature. Then they read as a whole group, do small group activities, and then go to individual activities. So it, there's this gradual release of responsibility with the students and, and teachers really like that. And they had a lot of really um, superior um, English language learner resources as well. Can I ask, uh, does this fit into the price tag of the budget that we're just working on? We have, um, <clears throat> we were allocated in our capital budget next year $550,000 um, towards textbooks. Do we have any and more textbooks coming up that we, we had those two that we're looking to adopt? Right, the two, uh, quantitative literacy and uh, computer science, those are actually in the FY16. So those are getting ready to, okay. yep, we're getting ready to move forward in purchasing those. So they were already paid for this year? They will be. They'll be okay. put out of capital funds currently, correct. Okay. So this one stays in the, will come out next year. Are we looking at any other budget. ones? Do you think anything coming up the pike other than this? Well, this will be, this is in the largest one, certainly. And this really adds now to the continuum that Lee and her staff have been working on. She started with a middle school piece uh, last year. And then at the same time, we started with a new elementary reading series. And now we're going to add to the high school component. So when we talk about that alignment piece. We're really starting to put the right aligned resources now pre-K through 12th grade. But weren't we also talking about a new third, fourth, and fifth science coming up? Or was that right? That will be in the, that will be in the following year. Okay. So Thank not you. not. I, to think, I knew there was another year, yes. set coming up. Okay. Because we already did the math last year. Right. Okay. That just never stops. It does. It. <laughs> it's a. It's goes on and on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions about the textbook series? Then we need a motion to put it on review to put the Pearson textbook series for school year 2016-17 on review. Mm -hmm. So moved. Do I, have a, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to put the Pearson textbook series for the 2016-17 school year out for review. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Ms. Vedit. Thank you very much. Um, next on the agenda is the park presentation by Mr. Dave Brown. Okay. And joining him will be uh, Mr. Watkins, our supervisor of mathematics, and Ms. Vedis will be back uh, joining as well. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Do you need a chair, Dave? Good evening. Uh, the, the fall block data has been released by MSDE. Uh, we are permitted to share it. Uh, you know, one of the things we're going to be talking about tonight is, is some of the difficulties in comparing individual administrations of a of, a, of the test, especially PARC. Uh, we're going to share the, the fall block data uh, with the four high school assessments. Jesus. And we will uh, do a sample parent report or uh, individual student report. Can I question on that? When just on that slide, comparing individual administrations, you're talking about internal Queen Anne's County or throughout the state? Uh, individual administrations being the fall and the spring. Uh, the administration of, the not assessment. an administration of a school. Not the no. administration of okay. a school, okay. the administration okay. of, of different okay. testing windows. All right, how we administer uh, it. Go we've ahead. never done this in the past. We've never broken out a test administration. 
and share data from one administration. Usually I report HSA data for the year, not a fall and spring report. Okay. You mean how we administer the tests? Right. How, that's, right. that's what you're talking about. Right. Okay. In other words, park we administer in the, in the fall and the spring. Administrations as in a verb. <coughs> I, no, I get I it now. I know, it's <laughs> funny how it's... It kept confusing I'm sorry, it just administration of a test is just common. Thinking. Test administration. I forget that testing. you think of administrators and administration of the school system. And yeah, thought testing. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the HSAs we administer uh, four times a year, so I've never come back and reported after each of those administrations. Part is twice a year currently, but it will be more often. Uh, as we get further into the park world. So the challenges of, of looking at single administrations like this is <clears throat> on this slide you can see we have the fall of 2014 compared to the fall of 2015. The test mode is a big factor in looking at these two tests. The fall of 2014 was the first time we gave the park administration. It was an entirely a paper pencil test at that point. This past fall, 2015, it was a computer-based test. And MSD has just recently gone back and looked at those results and done some comparisons uh, of what effect the mode of the test has had. Uh, difference between fall and the spring of this current year is we've had a change in duration of the, the test administrations. Uh, we went from a separate uh, performance-based assessment and an end-of-year assessment the first couple times we have administered this test to now a single administration. So we went from five units to three units. So it makes comparisons between the years and the, the different administration windows a little more difficult. Also the fall administration, if we look at our algebra one test, we only tested 39 students. So it's hard to look at data for 39 students and get any uh, information. That's about 6%, 6.5% of the, our total number of students that we're going to be testing in Algebra 1 this year. And why, is that, is, why is that? Why only 39 students? <clears throat> because uh, the students taking Algebra 1 right now are usually either students that are retaking the course or have come to us from another system or outside of the state and have not taken Park Algebra 1 before and took it this fall. Oh. Most of our first time Algebra 1 students are year-long students. So they took it in the spring. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the other difficulty is English 11. Uh, the spring semester that we just had is the first time we've actually tested, I'm sorry, the fall semester, uh, the fall block test of this year is the first time we tested uh, English 11. They did not have one in the fall of 2014. So telling you that we can't compare it, we're gonna go ahead and compare the data. Uh, performance levels, just a re reminder, there are five performance levels for PARC. Uh, level five is exceeding expectations. Level four is having met the expectations. Three is approaching expectations. And level two and one are not meeting expectations yet. Uh, to put that in, in terms right now is for, for graduation requirements for our Algebra one test and our English 10 test. Uh, our current graduation requirement for this year is students must participate in the test. So every score you see, the student is meeting their graduation requirement. Next year when we look ahead, they will need to be a level three in order to graduate test takers next year, or a score of 725. For college and career readiness scores, we are talking a proficiency level of four or five, so that would be English 11, and Algebra 2. So those are the scores we're looking at for college and career readiness. So the Algebra 1 score, you'll notice I didn't put any percentages in there. I really can't break this down and, and tell you percentages here. Uh, other than at the very end there, the, the level 4s and 5 is less than or equal to 5%. With 39 kids, if I start putting percentages in here, if you knew a student who took the fall block test, you would probably be able to come very close to getting his score, especially if I broke it out and did subgroups. So those bands are, are fairly accurate. They're not exact, <coughs> but you can see where we fall last year compared to this year in Algebra 1. 
And again, we had 62 students taking it last fall, 39 students taking it this fall. It, it's really hard to get any kind of meaningful information with that small group of population. Moving on to Algebra 2, this is a bigger population. We, we tested 266 students last fall, 165 students this fall. And you can see their scores there, uh, the breakdown. When in the fall is that done? I mean, after they've done one quarter? <laughs> they would have com almost completed their, their semester course. So this would be students that are near completing their Algebra 2 course. This was done in December. This was done in December. It's done in December and January. January. Okay, so it towards the end. The semester so they're, they're of work. It's their end of course assessment. Okay, all right. Yes, Although it's not quite at the end of the course, it's as close. As so, what are we finding? Why we have a lesser percent in the four percent in, in the green area? In the level fours. Right for my using them. Again, um, keep in mind the mode effect here. Uh, You're saying it's the computer? The, the bottom one, 2014, was all pencil paper. 2015 was all computer based. And according to MSDE, the biggest impact of that mode effect is on the Algebra 2 assessment, where the students actually had to put their information, all their formulas in, in an equation editor into the computer. So they had to use the equation editor to enter their information. So, in my opinion, that had a huge effect on this score. Well, hadn't the students been working with that prior to that? And, you know, They've had very... some experience with an equation editor, but it's different than a word processor. Most of our students are very comfortable with word processors, but equation editors work a little bit differently. There's no question there are teachers have incorporated the use of the equation editor from the park website into their classroom instruction. It's not the center point of their classroom instruction though. They, we still focus on math and the, and, the, and the strategies to help students understand the mathematics when, when, it's, when it's convenient and when it makes sense for the kids to use the program it does. Remember when, every time we put the kids into the park prototype items online there, there's no feedback mechanism. So the, the teachers are very careful about when they engage the, 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 the students in using that platform because the teacher can't grade it. The teacher would have to look over their shoulder and see it in the computer program. And we know that the feedback process is the most valuable part of the whole instructional process. It, it, it's, a, it's limited as far as how we use it. We use a lot of the paper versions of it and we engage the kids in their rigor levels of the, of the test, but getting the kids in front of the computer has, has, has been a challenge and something that we're continuing to work through. It's only because, I only make this point, is because if this is going to count towards their graduation requirements, we've got to get this we got to get a handle on this. We, we, I feel like we do I mean, not us, on. meaning the administration, the teachers, you sure. know. Sure. Um, we can't. We can't set them up for failure. I agree. The the Agile Mind program that we have has a pretty robust assessment program, and next year they're adding a bunch of uh, open-ended items that engages students in the use of an equation editor. So it's going to be something that's tied right to our platform that's going to help with this problem. Um, this is this is more likely tied to a getting the answer down so that folks can understand what our kids understand more so than probably the kids don't understand it. I feel confident when we look at how our kids are doing that they are showing performance. And in the class. Make no mistake, Algebra 2 is our toughest, is one of our toughest data points that we look at. It's the, it's the, it's the college kind of gateway class and it's kind of the class that's most aligned to where a college readiness kid would be. So it, it's something that our, our, some of our students definitely struggle with and we're trying to figure out ways to help them be as successful as possible. Thank Why you. can't the teachers see it? Um, there's no way for them to, Cause it's, how they send all their they're, um, they send everything through to the teacher when they've done their homework and all. And when the students are testing, the, t the teacher is not permitted to look oh. at the individual oh. items on the screen. Seen the it's oh. actually a testing violation if a student teacher would overlook. I know that's a that's the frustration with a lot of parents. I get that even before we ever had park, was not knowing what their kids did wrong and how to prepare their kids better for next time because there's no feedback. Kind of a as statistics say, that's the way to go. It's part of the testing protocol. Um, as, as, as far as it's no. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so we're not hiding anything. Around. We just don't, we don't have to keep the. No, no, no. I, no, I, no, I'm, I'm not just gonna say making light of it. It's just, it's just how it is. It is. Uh, more troublesome to me than, than the scores here is the the achievement gap. Yeah. And the achievement gap. We have seen this achievement gap. Uh, we, we see it in 
all our assessments, all our grades, and, and this is something that we, we truly need to work on. Uh, if we look at our minority students, our Hispanic for Algebra 2, our, our Black for Algebra 2, uh, you can see that we're, we're struggling. Again, it's got the less than 5% mark there because we can't report scores less than that. Uh, for fear you could identify who we're actually talking about if we, we, we put those scores up there. One anomaly about this test, and I haven't seen it on any of our other scores recently, uh, our economically disadvantaged students actually outscored our non-economically disadvantaged students uh, on this one assessment. Again, we're talking about a small population. Uh, you know, our economically disadvantaged students there, I think there were 34 in this, this group out of the 166, I think we said we tested here. You're saying the males all passed, but the females did not? Is that what this we're saying? 20% uh, of the males passed, 15.3% of the females. So we actually had a higher percentage rate of males over females. In, in so what's the yes-no mean? Uh, the yes-no, it's for economically disadvantaged students. Yes, they're, they're economically disadvantaged, or no, they're not economically disadvantaged. And for the special ed, yes or no? Uh, they're either special ed or they're not special ed. I, I don't understand. Yeah. Do you get it? Yes. That percentage yeah. is economically disadvantaged of the number of students that were there. But that's the number of percent that's not. Percentages. Yeah. Passed. So twenty percent of those students met or exceeded. They got, received a four or a five on their right. They are special ed. And for males. Not. For males. Twenty percent for males. Yes. Who are are economically? No. 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 Each block is each. It's its own. Female. Each block stands on its own. Yes. It stands on its own. Eighty percent of the males did not make four or fives. Okay. 15% uh, 15.3% 15 of the females scored a four or a five on that assessment. Yeah. Uh, in English 10, uh, you see this, the, the breakdown for English 10. Again, this is a graduation requirement. Currently, 100% of those students are set, are, will graduate based on this assessment because they participate in it, in it. If this were next year, we would be looking at that yep, the yellow and green bands would be, have met their graduation requirements. So only 52% of the kids are gonna graduate? Uh, so the nine. yellow and green, all the way through. So we were talking nine. about this one here? Mm -hmm. I thought this one wasn't. 39% right three, now. That's three, that's four, graduation. that's five. So three, four, for English 10, we're counting we're three, four, and five. five this is three. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. It's 79. So it's okay. 79%. Okay, I wasn't counting the the three. Because right now, it's, it's level three and up is the graduation requirement. But in two years, it's going to be four and up. <coughs> in, well, actually, in because four in years, it, it's incremental. It increases about eight points a year. Right now, it's the 725 level, okay. which is at this borderline right here, and then it slowly moves up across the uh, from three to four. But also remember that with students, when it's the year in which they take that, so if a student takes it next year and, and the cut is 725, they'll always have to reach 725 in order to meet the graduation requirement. So it's just in the year. It's going to be that score for the year in which they had taken it. Is that the same for this year, that if they took it and didn't have to pass it, they just right. had to participate? They have to have to they've year. already made the requirement. Yes, because right. it's a participation. Uh, and, and also that 79% that, that have passed the test, I hate to use that term, but for, for clarity, they've passed the test. That's students that knew they did not have to pass this test in order to graduate. It's a big so, uh, That's a pretty good score. Uh, for a non-required score. But again, achievement gap, achievement gap, achievement gap. Uh, in, in English, the, the female students actually outscored the male students. No surprise. Uh, but again, our, our black population our, and our Hispanic population are still low. 
and our special ed population is still a problem here with our English. And this, you know, we're starting to see our farms kids drop away as well. Moving on to English 11, I can't show any comparative data for English 11 because we did not have an English 11 in fall of 2014. But for fall of 2015, you can see where, where we fall right now. Uh, again, this is a CCR class, so College of Career Readiness. Uh, so right now, we're talking, it's actually 56.8% of our students that took this test showed as, as College of Career Ready. Uh, there's some rounding in there, so. That's just the greens? That's the two green shades of green. Is, am I correct that the 10th grade is the, 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 the kids that are in the 10th grade now are the ones that are required to pass, they have to pass the park test to graduate from school, not the 11th grade? Uh, the 10th grade, the students that are sitting in 10th, 10th grade, grade right, right now, now, they need to take the park 10, the English 10 course, they need to participate in that. So Period. they would have just taken it either in the fall or just this couple weeks ago. They need to participate this year. And then they're satisfied the They have satisfied their graduation requirement. They will still need to take Park 11 for their college and career readiness test. And they will need to score a four or a five on that to demonstrate college and career readiness, but it is not a graduation requirement. They will graduate no matter So what year, what year will it be required for them to pass the park test? Students who take the English, uh, English 10 next year okay. must get a passing score, and that passing score will be the yellow band, the 725. So that would be the class of 2019? Yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And um, it really doesn't matter what graduating class it is or what grade they're in, it matters when they take the course. Okay. So it, it, you actually could have some uh, ninth graders that may have taken English 10 this year for some reason. Right. You may have some 11th graders that'll take English 10. Right. Uh, that are taking English 10 now. It's when you take the course, not the cohort you're going to through school with. Again, uh, achievement gap. You know, we see that in all our assessments. Uh, with a, you know, our Hispanic group has done much better with with this. Less of a, a gap here. We saw the uh, gap with our black students, our special ed students, and again, our economically disadvantaged students. Are, are <coughs> Before I go on, do you have any other questions about the assessment itself or, or the, the scores, the breakouts? If not, I'll, I'll go on to the uh, reports. <clears throat> We've had several questions about the reports. Uh, the top half of the parent reports, the, the student, individual student reports, give level information. Uh, this is the student performance level. It also has a scale where it charts out the student's performance level on the continuum from 650, which is the lowest obtainable score, to 850, which is the highest score. Uh, and, and it plots out where they are in that level. It also reports our school average, our district average, our state average, and the park consortium average. So when a parent gets this, uh, in this case, this is, a, this is actually a fall report from, from one of our students. Uh, you can see that the school average was a 746, the district average 754, state was 740, uh, the consortium average 735, and this student actually scored a 787, uh, which put them in a level four. So it's a real quick way of seeing how your student has done within the state, the district, and the school. In the lower half of the report, and this is an English report, uh, English language arts. It breaks it down into subcategories of reading and writing. And it 
scores the student in each of those subcategories. And then it breaks it down into the, the different subclaims here even further. So that we can see this student scored a 44, while the average, park average is a 50, the district average 53, school average 49, state average 47. So this student is less than the averages. And we can break that down and look at it and say, well, did very well in literary test, text. This arrow means the student did better than most students that, that scored a 750. Uh, informational test broke even with the students that scored a 750. And vocabulary, this was a weak area. So we can look at right down that list and see right where that student's weak area was. If I was a parent, I'd be very curious what the student's doing with vocabulary. <clears throat> On the writing side, this child scored a, seven, uh, scored a 41, which is above all the, the averages, and did very well in written expression and knowledge of language. And so <clears throat> in ELA, I can see that the one weak area may be vocabulary. So a lot of good information on this report. And on the back of the report, there's, there's very good information for the parents on what the report means, how to use it, including the website that, that gives far more information on it. <clears throat> we are doing you know, continuous improvement. Um, I want to turn to my to our content people here and see if they want to add anything at this point. Sure. Um, so this is the final week of school for our teachers, <coughs> and I, I promise you that our math department is going to be up and busy uh, the following the last two weeks of June. Uh, really all grade levels, kindergarten through high school, are getting together, and we're revising curriculum, we're realigning assessments, we're pulling data to look at how our kids are doing, and we're, we're responding to it. just want to remind you that when, when this year started, we didn't get any park data until halfway through the school year. So we didn't have a chance to respond last summer to this, so I think that this summer we have a good opportunity to review what we know our kids are doing doing and we're going to make some adjustments to it. Lots of adjustments. The, the other thing I wanted to add, and I wanted to commend uh, Dave, Rob, and Lee, and, and Elaine, Dr. O'Neill, which is not here, but from the elementary side. One of the things you can't see behind this is there's a whole suite of data reports for administrators. And these folks have been working for the last three months to engage our principals in how to break down these reports, what does it mean instructionally. And then so by the time we get the new set of data that each of our school principals will be working with our school improvement teams to try to determine and look at those individual gaps in performance and then start in the alignment of their school improvement plan towards the strategies that help can address that. So there's a whole other professional development piece that they're learning these new suite of resources in order to target individual students. And so I commend uh, my colleagues for that work in engaging uh, our school principals. Good. Anybody else? Questions, comments? And okay. We're expecting spring data uh, to be coming. Hopefully by the end of June we'll get our first preliminary reports. They will be embargoed, so it will probably be August or end of July, beginning of August, Come back. we'll be able to actually share them. <coughs> yeah. Our students continue to do great things. And <laughs> I just want to we get a, get a point where we we're be, going to be comparing it to the rest of Maryland. Is that <coughs> yes? Happen? When we yeah. have the full yeah. year data. Year. Problem is, only about half the school systems in Maryland do a fall block assessment because oh, yeah? most have year-long courses. So about I think it's about 12 that actually do spring block, and not all the schools within the systems do a spring block, a fall block uh, assessment. But yes, so it's, it's hard to get year. statewide data. Yeah, but at the end of the year, you'll at the end do of the, the year comparative data. It's always the questions we get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where do we fit in Maryland? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Being evaluated now in our own. Sure. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the approval of the Sudlersville Elementary School principal. Well, I'm going to ask you to do something in a very strange way, which you can always say no. Well, I would like you to approve the position that we uh, that we um, announced, but give us time tomorrow to let the school know, but also to let the people know who did not get the position. Yeah. Because if we share the name now, 
publicly, but I would like you to approve it so we can get that person on board. But we'll send out that announcement tomorrow morning after um, we've had a chance to share it with the staff and also with people who didn't get it. And that, those are the people I always worry about most. Okay. Just respect. So mm -hmm. I need a motion to approve the Sellers Elementary School principal presented presented to us in closed session for the 2016-2017 school year. <coughs> Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to approve the Sellersville Elementary School principal for presented in closed session for the 2016-2017 school year. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, and do you want a 10 minute closed session or do you just want to? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay, um, now I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments regarding the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote to adjourn the June 13th um, Board of Ed work session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. No. Thank you. Thank you.